Mm. Correct? Exactly. Great. So that's absolutely, that's really good. So it's really interesting to see how we're going to be using that. Um, thank you so much, Louise, for joining us for the first time. Over to you. Okay, thank you, Wendy, for the, pre the presentation. So as she said, um, I am a teacher in, well, assistant professor in the, um, in the university called UNED, that's in Spain. The headquarters are in Madrid. Uh, so it's a, uh, a, a distance education university. To put it short, it's the, the Spanish Open University. Uh, probably all, all of you know about the Open University. Um, one reason for that is they are very um, involved in Moodle development. So um, UNED is uh, a sister university to, to the Open University in the United Kingdom. Uh, our structure is very similar. Our uh, learning methodologies uh, are very similar also. The number of students we have is also similar. So uh, you get a very good idea about what UNED is if you think on the, on the Open University of the United Kingdom. So as you can imagine, in, in such a context of distance education, um, STEM or STEAM uh, disciplines, science, technolo technology, engineering, and mathematics, are quite hard to um, to to give in 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 distance education university because these disciplines have in common that they need uh, exper experiment practice, especially science, technology, and engineering. And laboratory practice are a very important part of the curricula for students on, on these fields, on these disciplines. So since seven years ago, when I entered UNED, I have been working on virtual and remote labs to allow our students to perform their laboratory activities, their experimentation activities at distance. So that's what I'm going to talk about. I, I have been doing all my work about virtual and remote labs um, with Moodle, integrating them in Moodle. And I'm going to show you um, the plugins we have developed for, for this and a few examples of virtual and remote labs, how you can use them and, and things like that. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to to do the presentation in, in my own computer in point here because I have some animations. So first of all, I need to, to tell you a little bit about virtual and remote labs. So it's pretty simple, but basically virtual labs are simulations um, that allow the user to have some interaction with the application. Since they are simulations, they are based on mathematical models on and the theory behavior of, of a system. And remote labs, on the other hand, use real equipment and devices, and they perform experiments in reality. So when students work with remote labs, they are actually acquiring real data. So these are some examples on simulations or, or virtual labs. Uh, I make a small distinction between simulations and virtual labs. Usually simulations are understood for things like these three, the one on the center and the, those two on the left, like more simple things that give an idea of a physics phenomena or whatever. And virtual labs are like more complex applications like these two on the on the right, uh, with which uh, students can uh, work more in, in a more similar way uh, to a to a real laboratory. So virtual labs and simulations are good because they are based on mathematical models and they teach students um, what the theory says. Okay, so they they are watching how a system is reacting and behaving um, given 
the, the theory. So if I get to this one, for example, this should open um, the simulation here. So basically, this is a roller coaster, and I can play it, and then the roller coaster goes up and down, and I can uh, I have the potential energy and the kinetic energy measured by these bars. But then the good thing about the simulation is that it is interactive, so I can change the shape of the roller coaster and see how that affects the movement. So it's uh, it's kind of interesting for students. Uh, to see the relation between potential energy and kinetic energy and the preservation of total energy. So this is a very simple one. There are, of course, more examples. I'm going through all of them because it's quite quick. And um, illustrating, I think. So these are several balls that are colliding among them. And the good thing about this is um, there are several uh, differential equations here we solve for each of the balls. So if I move a ball a little bit, then you will see this is actually behaving. Uh, it's solving the, the differential equations for each of the balls. So it's um, um, a very interesting way of showing the behavior of, of things. And we, we will get into, into the program that uh, would allow us to create simulations like this one. And then we have um, this example of a simple pendulum. This one is a JavaScript simulation. The, the ones before were made in Java. So as you can see, very simple things that illustrate, uh, in this case, physics phenomena to allow students to better understand what the mathematical equations are saying, right? And then we have virtual labs, which are more complicated. If I go to this one. So this is basically um, a heat transfer system. So we have a resistance in one end, a fan, uh, three temperature sensors here. And if we play the simulation, basically, we can measure the temperatures in the three sensors in these lines, red, green, and, and black. And um, if I get this in automatic control, OK, let me set this to English and make it a little bigger. Yeah, I can do it like this. Or I think that's too much because it gets out. Yeah, um, I get this in automatic control. And then I change the temperature. So right now it's 40 feet, 43 degrees in sensor 1. That's what probably you cannot see that very well. But there is a, a red line here showing 43. If I change that to 62, for example, I get the, the temperature, this red line showing the temperature in this first sensor going to uh, 62 and the temperatures in the other two sensors also rising um, so this is a, a, a more complex laboratory I would say uh, students use this laboratory to um, make um, practices on automatic control and all these labs uh, can be embedded in Moodle with the plugins I will show you uh, in, in a while Good. And finally, um, the last example for virtual labs and, and simulations I have here is this one, also a complex one, as you can see. This is uh, a system modeling the behavior of a ball in a, in a bin, which slope can change. So if I play this and I change the set point, which is uh, shown by the blue arrow there, and I move it here, then the slope of the beam changes a little to make the ball go to that particular set point. And then there are different control strategies students can use to make the ball go uh, to the position set by the set point. Good. So I think 
that gives uh, an idea about what virtual and, and remote labs, uh, about virtual uh, labs and simulations, without going into much detail on, on what each of them can do. So now uh, let's go to some remote labs examples. Um, so it, while virtual labs and simulations are good because they show what the theory says, remote labs are also amazing, of course, because they are giving real data. Uh, so we are getting to the real stuff here, right? So in, in the laboratory we have in the university, we have this plant, for example, a three tanks system in which students need to control the, the water level or the liquid level in each of the three tanks. But we have a lot more of systems, and this is only a representative um, set of them because we have like about 18. But here I, I selected um, four of them. We also have a DC motor, this uh, heat flow system, um, which I have already shown you in, in the virtual lab. Uh, and a bull and a ball and hoop system. The thing is, the way this works is we have the, the physical device in our laboratory, and then we control that from a computer or maybe a, a small uh, card, like um, it could be Arduino or, or Beagle Bomb Black or a Raspberry Pi or whatever, but I have represented that by a computer in this picture. And then what we do is to make that available somehow through the internet to our students, which can connect from their laptops, from their computer, from their homes, for example. And we give them a user interface, an application they can load. So what you are watching there on the right are the um, the applications for the remote labs, which are very similar to the applications we developed for the virtual labs. So our idea is to give them um, an application for a virtual lab, and they work with it, then they, um, they deliver to the teacher a laboratory report of the virtual lab, and then they move to the remote lab, and they find, when they do that, a user interface, an application which is very similar, almost exactly the same to the virtual lab, but with which they operate real devices instead of a simulation, instead of a mathematical model. So, um, as I was saying, we usually try to provide, well, we always do, both a virtual lab and a remote lab. And this is good because uh, in that way they get what theory says and what real experiment says. And that way they can compare um, the, the results given by the theory with the results given by the reality, which is one of the fundamental steps of the scientific method. So in, in this slide, you have in the left part, the, the application for the virtual lab. This is a laboratory on diffraction of light. So students watch the diffraction pattern of, of an object. And on the right side, we have the, the application for the remote laboratory of the same effect. So in this case, this is the diffraction pattern given by a small circular hole through which uh, you make um, go a, a laser beam. And this is the experimental setup we have for that experiment in our university. So as you can see, it's uh, quite complex. You can see the, the laser on the right part. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but well, it's the, the black large thing here on the right. And then a camera on the left, the screen, in which we get the diffraction pattern and well, so on. OK, so I always like to do a live demo when I present these things. So this is you now saying something like, wow, are you serious? Are we really going to watch a light connection to a lab? And this is me saying, sure we are, let's go. And you must be thinking at this point, something like, but that's too risky, what if it fails? And then in this presentation, as I always say, now nah, our labs are amazingly robust. 
But then, of course, inside, I am thinking something like, man, I hope this will work. Because when it doesn't, it's uh, a bit violent, you know. OK, so this is our Moodle uh, website. Let me first go to the, to the, to the main page, um, turn everything off. So yes, uh, uh, the visual pen is um, essential. You, you would have uh, recognized it probably. Uh, we have called our site Unilabs for University Network of Interactive Labs. And here we have a lot of courses, and not all of them are from UNED, not only from our university, but there are also some courses from other universities, such as the University of Huelva, Complutense University of Madrid, Universidad of Almería, and so on. And you have a list of universities involved in this network somehow at the bottom. And what we're going to do is to enter the, um, okay, this is in, yeah, it's in English, that's right. Um, the Experimental Techniques 3 course, and this is a, a subject for the physics degree in which students need to perform laboratory activities, right? So if I enter in that uh, course, I have um, um, the, the resources the, the users, the students can, can use. So they have some PDF with documentation. Um, and well, uh, I will talk a, a little bit about the structure later, but um, basically the important thing now is they have these new activities in Moodle for virtual labs and remote labs. So if I enter the, the remote laboratory about the reflection and refraction loss, for example, and you can see they have quite a few labs here. So if I scroll down, I'm going through all the experiments. This one is the, the one on, on diffraction I shown in, in the slides. And there are even more. So, so as you can see, they have quite a few experiments. So if I go to this one, then this is going to launch um, a Java application. So yeah, right now, our labs are based on Java, which we do not like that much, but we started working with this, as I said, like seven years ago. And now we are in the process to move everything to JavaScript, which will make things easier, uh, faster, and also compatible with smartphones and things like that. And when we go to the end of the presentation, if I have time, I will show you already a, a very simple remote lab uh, built with JavaScript, just to show you how it works. Um, but as I was saying, the, the good thing about moving to JavaScript will be that it will be faster and, and more accessible in the sense of um, compatibility with devices for our students. So if I connect to the lab, I should receive the webcam image from my laboratory. There it is. Oh, so uh, there is one thing I, I forgot to tell you. Right now I am in Italy in a conference. <clears throat> well, in the, in the hotel, not, not in the conference right now. Um, and this lab is in Madrid. So I am connecting to it, actually not from Madrid, but from uh, I am in Brescia right now, so maybe it will go a little slow because of the distance, but it should work pretty well. So this is the laser here at the top, and we can see the incident ray and the refracted ray here. So what students do basically is to change the, the incidence angle, for example, 16 degrees, and the laser should move. Yeah, there it is. So now the laser is uh, going through air at the top to the oil at the bottom with a 16 degrees angle. And I can see the refracted ray here. And students can move this blue arrow, this virtual pointer, to the refractive ray position and take a measure. So when they take a measure, they get the data here. So they know the incident angle is 16. The, refract the refracted angle is 10.3. 
And if they repeat the process, and for example, they get 29 degrees for the incident angle, and then they get a new measure of the refractive angle, they take the measure, and then they move to 42, and they repeat the process several times, what they are actually doing is to have some data they can then use to plot a graph and see there is a lineal regression between the sign of the incident angle and the sign of the refractive angle. And if they do the linear regression and they study the theory we provide in the PDF document I told you about in the course, they will know that the slope of that um, line in this linear regression is giving uh, the value for the index of refraction of the media in this experimental setup, which in this case is oil. Right, so that was a simple remote lab example. I think you now get the idea of what are both virtual and remote labs. So uh, one question, can you see the, the whole slide? them to full screen are, are you watching the, the the slides correctly because when i did some tests i think um the things up the right and the and up the left of my screen were not in what my screen was sharing okay let me go to the chat and see oh sorry so you were asking Sorry, uh, I thought uh, there was some somebody who was going to talk to me when, when someone had a question. So let me let me read you and let me see. Okay, just give me a couple of minutes to read you, please. Yeah, okay, so yeah, they are available 24 seven. And of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes uh, a computer stops working or, you know, or electricity falls in the building or things like that. But they are usually available 24 seven, exactly. That's one of the main advantages also of remote labs, not only for, you know, that they are not only, um, interesting for distance education, I think, but also as a complement to traditional education because you can provide experiments you do not have available in your university or you can provide the experiments you have available in your, in your university but outside the lab hours or in 24 seven. So, okay, we will get to that, you elite, so we, one of the plugins we developed is a booking system, which uh, uh, is in charge of uh, making the users, you know, to make a reservation for the, for the lab. So only one student will work with the lab in a certain, in a certain time slot. So we will get to that. Uh, you can expand the view of the desktop share and see all. Uh, the thing is, I am actually sharing the full screen uh, in theory, but but I think yeah, the borders are not shown. So so what I'm going to do is um, keep on with the presentation here, but maybe something like this. I think you should be able to yeah, to see like this more or less, right? Okay, um, so I, I will try to come back here to see if you are talking or asking something more often. Sorry about that. Right, so so what, what I'm going to talk now is about the creation and the deployment of these applications, both virtual labs and remote labs. 
So basically, this is the table showing the casuistry for, for this. So there are several things here. One is the creation. The other thing is the deployment. And there are two tools I have been talking about, virtual labs and remote labs. Okay, so you might be wondering, what do you use to build these amazing applications, simulations, virtual labs, and remote labs we have been watching? So what we use is a program called EJSS, formerly uh, known as EJS, which stands for Easy Java and JavaScript Simulations. Um, before, it was only Easy Java Simulations. So one of the good things about this program is that it is free and open source. It has been developed by a teacher, a professor in the University of Murcia. Um, he's a mathematician, and he has been working on this program for about 10 years. And it has always been free and open source and always will be. OK, so that's pretty cool. And of course, for the deployment, as you have already seen, for both virtual and remote labs, we use Moodle. And despite going back to EJSS, despite the name, which stands for Easy Java and JavaScript Simulation, um, my group in UNED um, have been working in extending this tool, EJSS, so you can also use it for remote labs, not only for virtual labs or simulations. And when then, I will go also to show you um, maybe uh, how can you get some already existing virtual labs or simulations, and maybe even remote labs. So you do not actually have to create them, but you can uh, just pick them and use them from, from the community. So, OK, so um, uh, uh, a few words of EC Java and JavaScript simulations and Moodle and, and the plugins we developed for the deployment of the applications in Moodle. So as I was saying, the tool EJSS has been built by um, a teacher in, in the University of Murcia, Francisco Esquembre. And then we extended it to, um, to get features to make it available to remote labs, for example, connection to IP cameras, thanks to Felix Garcia, also a teacher in, in the University of Murcia, and Francisco Esquembre, connection to hardware, thanks also to Felix Garcia, Francisco Esquembre, um, a teacher in, in the University of Huelva called Andres Mejías, and a couple of people in my group in UNED, Jesus Chacón and Jacobo Sainz. Uh, we have multi-language support, for the for the virtual and the remote labs, it, that's something I added to the tool. So when you change the language in Moodle, the application changes its language also. And then we have the plugins to deploy all of the tools, all the applications created with EJSS in this LMS. So um, the basic one, the core one, it's called EJS App. Um, that one was developed by me and, and a colleague named Ruben Eradio. And then we have the EJS app booking system to manage the connection of uh, our students in an ordered way uh, to the remote labs. We have uh, the EJS app REM lab manager, which I will show you in a few minutes. And there are also three more plugins. Um, I don't know if I will have time to talk about them because I'm actually, uh, I am pretty slow, so I need to rush a little bit. Well, anyway, both EJSS and Moodle are free and open source, so this is very adoptable and adaptable. OK, let me go back to see if you have more questions. No, that's fine. Then we're going to move on. So OK, as, as I said, for the creation, we are using EJSS in both sites, virtual labs and remote labs. If I had more. Uh, time, I would actually show you the EJS uh, tool, which is basically this window here. Um, so in just a couple of minutes, basically it's divided in building a model. If it's a simulation in which you build your your model and you 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 enter the differential equations or whatever, and the view in which you build the graphical user interface 
um, the final aspect for the application. Okay, but uh, I, I was planning on maybe doing a, a small example, but I will I will skip it, I think, because uh, I don't have that much time, right? So this is what I was uh, telling. You have the model and you write their variables, equations, code, whatever. You have the, the view there. Uh, and when you build both things, then you have the, the simulation or the remote lab at the right. Okay, um, so for the deployment, let's go for the Moodle plugins. Um, yeah, so basically, if I go to my web browser, you have, um, where did I get that? Okay, here. So if you search for EJS app in the Moodle plugins repository, you will find the EJS app booking system. You will find the core plugin, EJS app. You will find EJS app private files browser, which basically is a plugin uh, that extends the private files block, um, the core private files block from Moodle. And it is used for um, receiving the data files that students get when experimenting with virtual and remote labs. So when you, you so you can save uh, files, data files or image files from the EJSS applications directly to the private files browser, to the EJS app private files browser. So that way, for example, in, in the in the example of the uh, of this remote lab I connected to, in which I was changing the, the angle of incidence and I was measuring the angle of, of refraction, all those data that were being stored in the table, students could uh, in one click save the data and get a text file, in this case, into their private files repository in Moodle. So they have the data collected there and then they can download it and you know prepare the laboratory report or send that file to the teacher as a proof uh, they have been experimenting with the with the system and, and 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 so on then there is a blog which is in, in um, not working that well right now but i hope it will be perfectly okay in about one year or or less for collaborative sessions with both virtual and remote labs. The idea is to have synchronous collaborative sessions so several users can work with the same remote lab or with the same virtual lab in a synchronized state so they can uh, act over the system um, you know, in the same session so they can share ideas and so on. And there is the open source physics repository, which I will show you right now. And there is also one uh, plugin more, the sixth, which is not yet in the Moodle plugins repository, but it is available from our GitHub here. So, well, uh, you have the links in the in the course um, content in here in the in the iMood um, web page. So don't worry about the links, they are all there. Uh, but basically the the, um, uh, the plugin that was left was, uh, let me search for it, this one, the REM Lab Manager, which is used to configure the particularities of the remote laboratories. So let me see if I have time to show you that too. Okay, so if I go to, to my course here in, in Moodle, I'm going to, to use uh, this course in uh, to show you how to add a, a virtual lab. So if I click on the add activity or resource and I click on the EJS app activity and I click on add and I go to this Moodle form, this would be, for example, virtual lab example, right? And then I can either choose the file from here or drag it and drop it. So let me let me drag it and drop it. I'm going to the my EJSS workspace. And I'm going to add a JavaScript simulation so it would be faster to show it. So I just drag and drop the file generated by EJS 
And then, well, there are more options here, quite a few options to configure the remote lab or the virtual lab, but they are not necessary. So the, 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 the required things are the lab name and the file with, the, with either the virtual lab or the simulation. Then I click on Save and Display. <clears throat> and then they show me uh, the simulation here, OK? And in this case, it also has some text attached to it, right? With uh, some description, acknowledgments, or whatever. Good. Um, so it's as easy as that. Now, if you have a, a remote lab, um, it's very similar, but you need to configure some particularities for the remote lab. Okay, so before I go on, let me check if you have more questions. Yeah, I have 10 minutes now, a little less. That's fine. Um, going back here. So, okay, to, to make it also short, this is the EJS app file browser. So as you can see, it's like the private files browser of, of Moodle. But as you can see, there are some type of files here which are recognized to be created by this, the, the virtual or the remote labs. Uh, and also, the image files here have been uh, captured. From, you know, they are like graphs and things like that from the, from the virtual and the remote labs. And these text files are data obtained from the virtual and the remote labs and so on. OK, so um, this is the collaborative uh, blog for the collaborative sessions. So you can create collaborative sessions, uh, close them, and so on. And then there is the remote laboratories manager. So you have here the experiences of the remote labs defined. Uh, you can configure the already existing experiences or delete, delete them, or you can configure a new one. So if I go to an already existing one, Basically, uh, what I have here is some parameters uh, to choose the way the remote lab can be used. So just focus on this part right now. So for example, you need to give a name for the experience. Uh, you may need, it's not necessary, uh, to give the IP address of the device in charge of, of the lab, the port through which you make the connections. You say if the remote lab is available or not, if it's uh, in free access or not. So if it's in free access, you do not need the booking system. It's, it works in a first in, first serve way. Uh, but if you use, if you say it is not free access, then you would need the EJS app booking system. Um, you can select the slots duration. So you can select between 60, 30, 15, 5, or 2 minutes. So a student connected for more than 60 minutes would be kicked out. Um, you can select the total slots of work, the weekly slots of work, and the daily slots of work with the remote lab for each of the students, and so on. Right, so let me go to the, to the booking system. Um, so here it is, the, the, this is like our resource. Um, so if I click on it, I get a timetable. I get the list of uh, remote laboratories in the course. Uh, so I can choose one of them. I can choose the date, Tuesday, the 17th of November. I can choose I want to work with this lab from 8 to 10. And I can make my book. And this will send an instant message to the student and to the teacher in charge of the remote lab and things like that. Uh, now I can see my bookings. I can see I have these two bookings. And actually, the, the calendar shows that I have these reservations. Uh, so if I go back and I try to reserve for the 17, any student will see that these two slots are already taken. And um, this is also shown in the Moodle calendar. So OK, here I do not have a calendar. Uh, so here you can see the 17 is now. Uh, somehow shaded, and it's showing for the user the reminder of the bookings. And uh, to end up very quickly, I'm going to show you, because this is very, very interesting, how to use virtual labs or simulations that already exist, that the community have built. There are about 400 of them, uh, mostly on physics. 
So if you have a Moodle site and you install the EJS app plugin and the open source physics plugin repository, which is this one from here, you can start uh, embedding virtual labs or simulations in your Moodle course in just a few clicks. So you click on the add an activity or resource button, this um, loads, okay. It's a bit slow now. Add an activity or resource, I click on EJS app, just like I did before, but instead of dragging and dropping, so I'm going to call this open source physics. Instead of dragging and dropping, I'm going to click on the app file. I'm going to click on this repository, open source physics, and this is basically, you know, like a YouTube or whatever you want to call it, but with applications made on EJSS, mostly on physics, but also on some other stuff. So I don't know, I can search uh, for keywords here, like car or whatever. Um, so I'm going to search one uh, which is on JavaScript instead of Java, so it would be also uh, quicker to show. Uh, you have uh, an image of, you know, uh, the basic view of the simulation, and you also have a small description here about what the simulation is about. Uh, so I'm going to choose this one, for example. I select the file, and this is downloading the file from the repository, which is in the United States. Uh, I click on Save and Display. And when this uh, finish loading, because right now my network is very slow for some reason, uh, we will see the simulation. Okay, so things like it has failed, but okay, well, uh, maybe there is a problem with that one in particular, but you get the idea. So you would have the, the simulation embedded there, right? Um, so that was the part of um, the ready to use virtual labs using the Compadre open source physics repository. For remote labs, ready to use remote labs, we have our network called Unilabs, which you have just uh, seen in our web portal. So people uh, are invited to join our network. So if you're interested, just contact me, please. And then this is the last slide, almost. Um, so basically, this is the, the whole structure we have. We have our students connecting with their devices, either uh, laptops or tablets or smartphones, connecting to our Moodle site here, which uh, courses are uh, managed by teachers, uh, courses uh, by the teachers. But then um, there is a different role for the virtual and or remote lab user interface designers. There is also a different role for the remote lab manager and provider, and so on. So, so this is basically the, the picture of, of the, the architecture we have. And I'm out of time, so uh, that's it. Uh, if you have um, any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Luis, so much. That was fabulous, especially for your first presentation. We had a lot in there. Thank you so much. I'm sure we got a lot from it. Um, we'll be keeping the room open for at least another 15 minutes, but don't forget if you have Luis, uh, if you have any more questions for him, you can always pop it in the forums. Um, and, yes, we'll be starting our next session in 15 minutes. We'll hope to see you all there. Thanks so much. Thanks, Luis. Bye. Thank you, Wendy. Bye. Go on, ask. I can see there is a lot of delay on what I was showing. So you can still watch my mouse moving through that last slide. Wow. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for attending.
has been a pleasure. Um, I don't think I have Nick, but if you go to the to the open source physics repository and you make a search, maybe you would be able to find something. I'm not sure. There might be something. Yeah, you're welcome. So Barbara, Donna, any question there? Or did you just <laughs> fall asleep? 